Today I'm going to show you how to fix stick drift on the Quest 2 and replace one of these little joystick toppers while we're at it. I've done a lot of videos about stick drift on the Quest 2, how to resolve it, and how to replace the little joystick module that's inside the Quest 2 controller. All of these videos have been kind of compilations and they've been edited so that I could kind of compress everything down for time. I'm going to be totally transparent with you guys. I stumble over my words a lot, so I've got to make lots of cuts and clips in my videos. And it just makes it easier for me to get my point across and articulate my exact point. What I'm going to do today is a little different. I want to do this video all in one take and I want to show you guys exactly how long it takes me or somebody who watches one of my videos theoretically to replace a joystick. I've done videos on our channels about how to do it in 60 seconds or less or, you know, um, you know, five minutes or less. Uh, but all of those videos obviously have cuts and edits in them. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to put up a timer so that we can just do this full repair together and you can see exactly how long it takes me. I've got Kieran over here. She's got a timer going so I can kind of monitor my time. But I think that this should take me about 10 minutes. So we're going to see full teardown replacement of the joystick module we're going to put the we're going to uh, put the topper on here and then we're going to put it back together and we're going to see how long that takes so Karen are we ready okay ready go I do have to take the battery compartment and the strap out that's the easy part I've got my pry tool here we're just going to go up underneath the faceplate and we're going to pop this out this way that comes out very easy, and there's that little bit of the joystick. Now we start with the screwdriver. I usually go for the long screws first. I don't have a good reason for doing this. It's just kind of habit. Whoop. That's the longest screw in the whole bunch. And then we've got another long screw here. But you can tell them apart because one's silver and one's black. The rest of these screws are pretty straightforward. These are all uh, T5 screws, except for the two screws at the top that kind of hold the ring in. Those are T4 screws, but they're shaped in a way that the T4 screwdriver works and the T5 screwdriver works most of the time, depending on uh, the quality of the bit that you have. So my T5 screwdriver, which is a little worn down, fits in there just perfectly. If you've got a brand new screwdriver set or you buy one off our website, you may need the T4 screwdriver, but I'm going to cheat a little bit today for time so I don't have to change the bits out. I don't really organize the screws as I go, but it is important that you do organize the screws if this is your first time doing it. And definitely don't lose any screws because um, although I do have a bunch of these screws, they're hard to come by unless you email us about them. I don't usually have these listed on the website because people don't usually ask for them. If you do come across any parts for the controllers that you need and we don't have listed, just, uh, just ask. So now I've got to poke through this sticker here to get to these three screws. And I'll use my tweezers to kind of pull that out because sometimes they get stuck in there. Where are we at here? Sometimes it's a game of hide and seek with some of these screws. Most of the time I can get it pretty quickly, but um, you could always take the sticker off if you're not pressed for time. Alrighty, is that all my screws? That's all screws. Okay, so now we can take the ring off. Take this grip part out. The grip assembly. Then we gotta take the battery compartment out. We gotta delatch that there. The trigger has to come out. So we'll push on this little rod here. That pops out just like that. We can grab this on the other side. Some of these get stuck more than others. There's varying levels of uh, grease that are applied, it seems like, or maybe the grease just wears out over time. Now we're going to take off this antenna 
And we're going to undo these clips here. Pull these ribbons out. And then we got four screws that hold in the board. What's my time? Almost four minutes. All right. That's good because we're about halfway there. Take that off. We got our new joystick. We need to transfer this capacitance spring and then we need a thumb topper. There we go. Gonna line that up, clip that down. Gotta kind of line the springs up with the buttons here and then make sure that none of our cables are tucked underneath the board. Got to make sure that trigger springs in there as well. Then we'll screw this back in. All right, now we're back on the buildup. I'll go ahead and plug these in just to get them out of the way. What's my time? Five minutes and 10 seconds. All right. This is why when people are in the comments like, oh, joystick repair is so tough. And it's like, hey, I, I understand why you'd be hesitant to do it. But if you've got a pretty good tutorial on how to do it, it's not labor intensive. It's not time intensive. Anybody could do this. We gotta guide that antenna back in. And then we'll clip that down there. And we'll put our trigger back in place. Slide that rod back in. Okay. These kind of line up here, and then we just kind of clip that in. Got to put our battery compartment back in. And then press that down. Now we can put our grip assembly back on. Got to put this portion of the ring up front here and then we'll just kind of slide that around the clips in and then we'll go back with our screws and I kind of go reverse with the screws I like to start with the long ones first again I don't know why it's just how that that's my time seven minutes The screws take more time than anything. Because there's a dozen of them. Eight minutes. Let's see. We got a few to go in here. There's four in this battery compartment area. 
three that hide underneath the sticker and then the one that's fairly obvious in its placement. Oh no. I'm having trouble lining it up. I'm under pressure, that's that's the key factor here. If nobody was watching, it'd be. I would already been done by now. Are we at nine? Now we're at nine. Alrighty. Line that up. We got the wrist strap in. And let's plug in a battery just to make sure everything works. That's a light. Time. So it really is that easy, and it really doesn't take that much time. I highly recommend checking out our other tutorials on how to fix stick drift. I go into more detail on the things to look out for. You can check out those videos below. Um, that's all I really got for you guys. I just wanted to show you how quickly this can go if you know what you're doing and if you watch one of my videos on how to do it. And of course, if you have the right tools for the job. So it's easy to resolve joystick drift. It doesn't take that long. I highly recommend you do it. And hopefully this prevents people from spraying WD-40s into their into their controllers over the next uh, you know weeks or months or however much longer these are being used by people out there. That's all I got for you guys. I appreciate you hanging out with me and watch my little video and we will see you guys on the next one.